let's let's talk fabulous for a second here. Where, 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 how does he get into the equation? Because, you know, early on, I'm a fan at this point, right? And, you know, there's this sort of style, this like sort of relaxed, laid back style that's kind of popping. You know, obviously Mace and all these other kind of guys are. And then Fabulous comes around and we're like, whoa, who's that? Like, how did that, how did you sort of end up discovering him? Is there a crazy story there? No, you know what? Fab. Fab, the story with Fab is a little bit different. Um, I've known Fab early on because we worked on a lot of his music, Scott. Right. And his manager at the time was one of my aces. Right. So I stayed in his face. I was, you know, he and I always saw each other because I was his manager and he's, oh, D, with, you know, hey, D, hey, D. So, you know, years later, um, he ends up with my old assistant. How about was that? Doing a lot of administrative stuff for him. Sure. And she was, you know, she tapped him on the shoulder and said, "Listen, you need to make some changes in your life. Let me call Derek. He can get you. Derek knows how to, you know, make things happen." So Fab was like, "All right, okay, well, let's see." And uh, you know, came in and cleaned his whole thing up. Got him. Now yeah. he's in control of all of his IP, everything. He was not in control wow. of it for 20 years. He is now in full control of it. So what did was he sort of the victim of like a bad deal? Is that what you're saying? No, I wouldn't even say that. I, I did, you know, if anything, what I walked away with from it all is that he's one of the most loyal people I've ever met in my entire life. And that's rare, by the way. You hang on to loyalty. Man, people. rare is an understatement. 20 years? Yeah. That's super C. Yeah. That's just me and we're friends. Like, you know what? Yeah. You got that part of the business and I got this part, you know? Right. So right. I, I would never, um, I could never say it was a bad deal because, I mean, I know the parties involved, you know, they were, they're my friends too. Right. So, um, you know, it's just life. Yes, Everybody's situation yeah. is right. Right. And, and also, you know, as a young artist coming in, you'll, you, you sure. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're it's a different mentality than when you're actually you know people don't necessarily have like a long-term vision in these things and think like i'll still be doing this in 20 years you know it's like especially in music where it's like such a short shelf life for so many artists you know and fabulous is somebody that you know he's fought and clawed for everything he's gotten and he's still here and that's pretty impressive still here. You, uh, you know he's I i'm wondering when we're going to see him on a versus you, you did remember it was him versus. All oh, right, uh, yeah, yeah, we did actually. They, you're right. We did. Yeah. We did. We definitely. But I, I think did. what I'm what what I'm selling what I'd be selling about him right now is he's not over, and I no. I think he's still you know we talk when we talk we talk fourth quarter we talk, you know you got one more in you I think you I tell him all the time I think he has more than one but. I think know, he's that got next big album. I think, I think he's got as many have. as he wants. I mean just. You know, good music is good music. You know, it's like he can right, keep going exactly, as long as he exactly. wants. And if we learned anything from what we saw last week on Versus, you know, KRS still sounds great. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's right. like. Uh, still good, right. Big Daddy Gang still sounds great. Yeah, of course. I mean, and, and I think that like, you know, I remember back in the day and for me back in the day is probably not that back in the day. But for, you know, when I was growing up, there would be like the temptations and the four tops would be doing like, you know, these kind of shows and they would draw out a certain, you know, generational people would go and pack it. And it may not even have been the real four tops <laughs> who even knows, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think that there's like definitely room at the table for hip hop has been here long enough that you could do shows forever. Now, like any artist can, you know, you can put a collection of a few guys together and send these guys here, send these guys there. There's cl people clamoring for this type of stuff. That is the greatest takeaway. And I yeah. think, you know, that's where we owe Swiss and Timberland and yeah. Triller and a tip of the cap because they, they, they have become so instrumental in sharing the roots of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And, there, and, you know, and that's another example, man, like, you know, how we started this conversation something happened sort of by accident to like create something huge. And I think this versus thing, I mean, I'm sure by design and they didn't anticipate it was going to be this. It's like, this is a, you know, it's a cultural movement 
it's like turned something that was an Instagram battle during COVID into we're playing the Barclays Center and there's some pay per view. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. It's really crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's really you know? crazy. Never thirsty.